After nearly 50 years, NASA has announced that they will return to the moon, and this time the organization intends to stay. The NASA Artemis program is like something out of a science fiction film, and this is all part of it. Two goals of the Artemis program are a manned mission to the moon and a permanent human presence on the lunar surface. Named after the great moon goddess Artemis, the series centers around her adventures. Artemis and Apollo were twins. It's NASA's way of paying tribute to the Apollo missions that brought humanity to the moon. The Artemis base camp, which will be established near the south pole of the moon, is the showpiece of the Artemis program. This is in line with NASA's plan to establish a base on the moon in preparation for future manned and unmanned exploration of deep space. Additionally, the Artemis base camp will be an essential resource for the NASA and SpaceX manned mission to Mars. When the Artemis program finally sends human back to the moon in 2024, it will be nearly half a century since the last manned mission to Luna. The contract to assist NASA with the Artemis program was given to SpaceX more than Blue Origin and Dynetics combined. NASA has given SpaceX a $2.89 billion contract to design and build an updated version of the Starship specifically for lunar landings. Two flights are planned for the project's early stages, an unmanned demonstration mission and a basic lunar landing. Shuttles built by SpaceX will transport astronauts between the Gateway and Lunar Orbit and the surface outpost. To accomplish this, SpaceX will launch a version of their Starship rocket design specifically for use as a lunar lander. Human Land System, HLS, is what it stands for. As part of NASA's and SpaceX's plan to visit and colonize Mars, the Starship itself is SpaceX's flagship rocket that will be leading the charge toward Mars. This upgraded Starship was designed specifically for a moon landing. Starship HLS departs most noticeably from the conventional design by omitting heat shields and air brakes. The reason is that there is no atmosphere on the moon to warm the Starship HLS upon landing. The HLS has a specialized landing thruster for use on moon surface during landing and takeoff. The HLS is scheduled to blast off from Earth without a crew using the super heavy boosters. In roughly three days, the Starship HLS will enter lunar orbit. The spaceship will then wait in orbit for its astronaut crew to arrive. The four astronauts will travel on NASA's Orion spacecraft from Earth to lunar orbit. The HLS is going to act as a shuttle for passengers between the moon's orbit and the surface. It can transport astronauts back and forth from the lunar gateway and orbital outpost. The HLS Starship is meant to dock with the Orion spacecraft or the NASA Lunar Gateway Space Station in lunar orbit to load up with passengers before descending to the lunar surface. Two astronauts will remain on the lunar gateway while the other two will descend the lunar gravity well to the surface in the HLS spaceship. Experiments and exploration of the lunar surface are scheduled to take up the first week of the first lunar surface mission. Well, on this mission, they will call the Starship HLS home. Once the two weeks are up, the astronauts who spend time on the surface will reunite with the crew that remained aboard the lunar gateway in orbit. Location of the Artemis base camp on the moon will be in the Shackleton Crater, which is close to the lunar south pole. Because the interior of Shackleton Crater is always in shadow, the peaks along the crater's rim receive almost constant sunlight. NASA has found isolated patches of frozen water in the area as well. According to NASA's standards, Shackleton Crater would make a great home base. NASA prioritizes access to both areas of complete darkness that hold water ice and areas of near-constant sunlight to power the base and moderate extreme temperature swings. The Artemis base camp will be more self-sufficient if it has access to ice. In its entirety, the Artemis base camp would be a lunar surface habitat designed to house four astronauts. The most important thing about a camp is the life support system, as well as radiation shielding as a landing pad, a facility will need power, waste disposal, and communications infrastructure. NASA recommends keeping the landing pad at least a mile or kilometer from other elements of the base camp, such as the habitat or solar panels. It will be located at a higher altitude to shield sensitive machinery and research sites from falling spacecraft. The estimates suggest that the thrust from landing spacecraft could disperse hundreds of kilograms of surface particles, water, and other gases over a distance of several kilometers, so this is important. NASA's South Pole Site Analysis and Planning Team leader, Rutten Lewis, says, 
You want to take advantage of the landforms such as hills that can act as barriers to minimize the impact of contamination. We are taking into account things like distance, altitude, and slope as we make our plans. Engineers will have an easier time communicating with astronauts working on the moon, thanks to the Artemis Base Camp's location on the side of the moon facing Earth. The Artemis Base Camp is supposed to have two mobility systems, a lunar terrain vehicle to help astronauts get around on the lunar surface, and a habitable mobility platform that could support trips away from the base for as long as 45 days. NASA is placing a lot of emphasis on mobility so that the moon base can be used to its full potential. The Artemis Base Camp relies heavily on mobility, and powerful mobility systems will be required to explore and develop the moon. Since we'll need a vehicle for a similar type to explore Mars, a habitable mobility platform is a crucial component. This is a summary of NASA's plan for the moon base, taken from a 13-page report made public due to general public. Eventually, the Artemis outpost will have a hopper that can transport scientific and technological supplies anywhere on the moon. The crew at Artemis Base Camp will operate it and refuel it with propellant found in the area. NASA also hopes to deploy a radio telescope on the moon's far side, which would be controlled from Artemis. The Artemis outpost version of a backyard radio telescope. NASA's plans to build the Artemis base camp are a part of the agency's broader effort to prepare for interplanetary expeditions. This moon base is the first of many steps humanity will take to explore the final frontier. It will show that it is possible to build sustainable outposts on the edge of space. The Artemis base camp will directly help us develop technologies and ideas that may help us colonize Mars in the future. After all of this, will NASA be able to build a society on the moon? Will building a society on the moon solve our problems with overpopulation here on Earth? Tell us in the comments section below. If you like this video and want to see more, click like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. We'll let you know when we add a new content. That's it for today, and I'll see you in the next video.